Good now, um, this rise in interest rates was to some extent a reaction, correct me if I'm wrong, to the Federal Bank in America also raising interest rates. Is that relevant here in the UK? What does that mean for how we move forward in the next year of what's happening globally? Well, the Fed, the Fed did raise rates, but I, I don't think that that was a key reason why the uh, Bank of England was raising rates. I think that the Bank of England was in a rising cycle for some considerable time. Inflation is a long way above target, still over 10% versus uh, 2% target. Um, it's scheduled to fall quite rapidly, but uh, the bank felt that it, it was needing to get inflation down and the real economy uh, variables were looking a bit stronger than they had. So it felt it had the confidence to uh, continue to raise rates despite uh, problems in the banking sector. So I think that that's the r right way of thinking about things. We have a stronger than expected uh, real economy. So GDP isn't going to con con contract as much as the Bank of England had feared it might. Uh, and um, the output, for, the outlook for uh, unemployment is pretty good. Uh, wages are continuing to rise fairly rapidly. So the bank felt that it needed to raise rates again in order to bear down on inflation. It, does that make any sense, though, Andrew, from an economic point of view? And what I mean by that, on my weekly morning show with Liam Halligan, we often discuss this. Inflation is normally a consequence of people feeling quite... Uh, they have a lot of disposable income. So they're spending. We have a very busy economy, a very hot economy. And raising the interest rates cools it down a little. People don't feel like that at the moment. That isn't the reason that we have this inflation, is it? And don't we need people to feel that they have more money in their pockets and not sp spending huge amounts on their mortgages so that we can get the economy growing again and keep these businesses open? Particularly, I'm thinking hospitality and travel, for instance. Well, I think it's rather the opposite. It's more that um, the inflation is high and we need to get the inflation down. And one way in which the bank wants to get the inflation down is by making people feel poorer uh, so that they uh, spend less. Uh, it, it's more that, that direction. It's not as if we're in a situation in which the inflation is about at the right level. And so therefore, we need to worry about um, you know, keeping the economy going a bit faster. Inflation is way above the target and has been well above target for a long time. A thing that I would say, though, is that I think that the, the bank didn't actually need to raise rates on this occasion because I think mm. it had already done enough with the things it had done before. Uh, monetary growth is already below 4% in the UK. And so that's likely to be a reasonably good indicator of what's going to happen out ahead off in the months, say, the year, 18 months ahead. And uh, it seems to me that the bank's already done enough. Um, inflation is likely to come down very rapidly. The bank itself thinks that, but I think it will probably come down slightly more rapidly than they think, at least on the medium term. Uh, and um, uh, so I think that they that they probably could have justified a pause for now. I also think that this is probably the last rise for some time. It, that doesn't mean that interest rates are going to suddenly start to fall rapidly or that they won't get higher. It might be that um, that they pause at this level or, you know, one or two minor cuts from this level for a couple of years, and then maybe they'll go up to 6% or something if the economy picks up. Um, these The interest rates that we have now, although they might seem very high by uh, the standards of the past decade or so, are actually quite low. Uh, they would be the kinds of interest rates that um, if you went back 15 or 20 years, you'd have associated with the period of economic downturn and recession. Uh, you wouldn't think of these as being interest rates that were somehow very high and bearing down on inflation. These would be the low interest rates that you would use to boost the economy. So I think that we should anticipate that if the economy starts to grow a bit faster, with the interest rates are going to go up further again. And people need to need to understand when they're making their decisions about their mm -hmm. household lending, their borrowing and uh, mortgages and so on, that the kind of interest rate environment that we've had for the past decade or more, is it was a very special and unusual period. It was emergency levels following the great financial crisis and um, the global financial crisis. And that's not likely to come back anytime soon. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to be talking to a mortgage advisor in just a moment. If you're watching and you have got questions about your mortgage, we are going to be talking to somebody in just a moment about that. Um, I'm wondering, though, um, Andrew, with, with people, you said that about the fact that, you know, people need to feel a little poorer in order to bring that inflation down. It, it's a very difficult one for the government, isn't it? Because to some extent, with an election in probably 18 months, they need to have an electorate that doesn't feel poor. Uh, in fact, we're running a Twitter poll this morning asking our, our audience if they do feel less well off now than they did uh, a couple of years ago. How did the government manage that? Because there isn't a huge amount of time 
to make people feel that they have more money in their pockets and thereby win an election. So what exactly are they playing at? Well, so exactly. Well, it, that's exactly right. And uh, some of the things the government's tried to do, of course, were to um, it, uh, it cancelled some rises in um, uh, national insurance and it cut uh, income tax rates at the lower end. Uh, so it's been trying to make people feel like it's going in the right direction. The reality, of course, is that with uh, public spending so high, absolutely unprecedented um, high levels of public spending, for no very obvious reason, since we're no longer in COVID, um, the tax rates are actually going to go up. So these kinds of measures which they're engaging in are very cosmetic. If they really wanted to um, ha have people more content, uh, governments tend to do a bit better when the economy was growing something like 18 months before an election. So they'll do better if the economy was already doing fairly well for the period um, a little bit in advance. If you don't manage to get the economy growing until only the few months before an election, mm. then uh, it, governments often don't do quite so well. So we mm. saw that, for example, in 1979 or in 1997, the government got absolutely pasted despite the economy doing very well. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that I think that the Tories' position is very, very difficult on the economy. It is. Andrew, one more quick question. I do have to move on. We saw Silicon Valley Bank go under. We saw Credit Suisse get bailed out. Should people be worried about the money that they they have in bank accounts right now? Um, well, at some level, you should always have a, a prudent concern uh, about the monies that are in your bank accounts. A bank isn't a completely safe thing by, by its very nature. So people should always apply a prudent level of concern to the, the monies in their banks. But it's worth saying that the UK banking sector hasn't had any particular issues so far. So these the, the problems that we've had have been associated with the US banks. And then there are some long standing issues with uh, Credit Suisse and then um, now with Deutsche Bank, which are coming in Europe. On the other hand, though, with interest rates at this level, so households have had to adjust um, to very low interest rates and have probably made some mistakes over the period. And financial institutions will have done as well. We saw that with the uh, problem with the pension sector last autumn. And it may be that in due course with higher interest rates, that does mean that some chickens come home to roost in terms of yeah. the UK financial sector as well. But for yeah. now, at least, yep, there is... there's no evidence of anything going wrong there. OK, good. Good for now. I hope you're right, Andrew. Executive Director and Principal of Europe Economics, uh, Dr. Andrew Lillico.